I'm not quite sure where you wanted to go with this. Did you want to keep the body up at 14? Because you can. Yeah, I think I'll okay. keep it at 14. Then just, uh, just I'll toss go ahead and lower, yeah. Yeah, lower the defense to 18 and 3, which costs, you say, 20 points. Right. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's 100 points for um, characteristics and 80 points for powers at the moment. So right. It's 180. So. Um, and so then you, okay, yeah, yeah, you're good, you're good. Okay, so uh, 100 points for characteristics, excellent. You know what? We actually have a few points to play with then, right? Because we're going yes. for 200. This is not bad yeah, at all. 20, so we have 20 points to play with. Wow, that's quite a lot. Do you want to put them into characteristics? Uh... A couple of things might make a difference for that. One is that if you bump up intelligence by one, it helps your awareness roll because it's yeah. just a perception roll. And another is that you could, you know, uh, be really extravagant and just be a monster for body if you wanted to. Just a monster. <laughs> um, which is which is a, a real possibility for this character. Um or, you know, you could, whatever, man. You could hop up the speed. Um, for starters, I think I'll just move it around and not concentrate. Like, I'll put 10 in intelligence. That intelligence makes that, what, 12? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so I have an int of 12, and I'll put 10 into presence, so that's okay. 3. 40, that's 46 for 10 in presence. Oh, that makes it 46? Yeah. You have a base of 2d6, and then it's a, a point for each. Oh, okay. Or five points for each. Which is cool. And intelligence, it's 10 points to go from 11 to 12. Correct. All right. Oh my god, it stops with everything except ego. <laughs> yeah, which is fine. That's where you wanted it, right? So For starters, yeah. 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 So um, so now we're talking. Now we look at this character and we're going, all right. Now I can tell you right away that your whole ratio thing is going to be fine. Um, because you basically, if we do your character without that one limitation, she'd be 215 points. Um, or no, 210, 210. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it. So let's just calculate the ratio 210 over 200. Mm -hmm. And that's going to give us 1.05. I like to multiply by hundred. So 105, we would say 105.0 is the ratio. Mm -hmm. You're capped at 119. So you're, you're, you got a nice little, yeah, low yeah. it's, it's, it's not yeah. a disadvantage heavy yeah. character. Right. And so that's fine. And um, we're looking at the character and we say, wow, what are your observations looking at the mechanics that you're going to mess with? Notice that your combat role is just based on either dexterity or ego. So it's 13 or 11. Mm -hmm. So your combat value is the same as, the, as your attribute. Number one. Um, and then you're looking at your speed. Okay, speed of two. Uh, you got your four die sixes and you, your recovery and your um, stunned value. You know, the amount that you would take that would stun you is 14. And then your uh, knockout is 28, which we used to call stun. And then your endurance is uh, 42. So there you go. Uh, your blast costs you eight endurance. And maximum flight would cost you um, eight endurance. And that's where you go. Um, your, your awareness doesn't cost any endurance. So you're actually, I mean, looking at it, you've got pretty solid sense of, of mechanics to use, I think. Um, yeah. If you were to look at the other things about your character that don't cost points or don't involve points, you're going to see that she actually has a lot of skills. If she has to be sophisticated like a princess, mm -hmm. she can probably adapt to that pretty easily. You know, no role really necessary. 
or if she wanted to impress somebody with that, she would use her presence. Um, if she wanted to spot like status at a very powerful level, like she's dealing with a bunch of politicians, she probably has a really good eye for that given her background. So therefore yeah. we would just use intelligence, you know, for her to suss out like, okay, Oh, that guy's in charge, you know, or something like that. And, um, so there's, there's a lot of other things that given her background, somebody, you know, we, we find evidence of some kind of freaky alien and you could, given your background, probably have an intelligence role to remember what kind of alien we're talking about. I mean, it might yeah, not be as, she, yeah. she's seen them where right. people from Earth not necessarily have. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, uh, you know, and you can think about the comic book. All of a sudden, the naive alien princess suddenly turns out to be an expert on the frog aliens that we just found. Right? <laughs> yeah. Speaks up. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, you're from yeah. around there, aren't you? No. She's right. not naive. She's right. just it, she's not, unfamiliar with Earth. She's not from here. Yeah, right. exactly. And so I think that's kind of a nice, you know, we, we can kind of see that that's built into the corners. You see how that, that triangle thing? is actually still an operative piece of what we're doing. Because there's a ton of things in each corner that aren't expressed in points, but they still matter in play. It's kind of the, I mean, that's no different from the original rules. They just weren't quite as explicit about it as they could have been. And it's nothing like the later rules from 4th edition on, where if you didn't have points in expert in alien cultures, then forget it. You had to, you had to pay. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, points. But we don't do that. I wanted to ask your impressions looking at just chapter six. What do you see? I mean, what do you what do you find? Granted, you're not looking at it with layout, right? So we don't have the nice yeah. little boxes and the nice little presentational approach. You're looking at a at a at a text draft, you know, text draft. But yeah. what do you see when you're looking through it? What uh if anything? Um, I like how streamlined it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of the stuff is like the other versions of champions, just with a different name and, and some different, um, effects. Yeah. Like concealment. Uh, like shut down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. concealment is just darkness and, uh, and it's a little more, I've, I, I really went through it and changed <laughs> certain wordings that either clarify something that was the case or i really do change something i say no 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 that's that's different but yeah i made which, uh, which is, density which is good the uh, solid i actually broke into smaller units so instead of that 40 point d solid that just renders you impervious right. what you do is you now have units of 10 so to truly get vision level or kitty pride level you would have to get multiple units and probably add some other power to it. So now it's more of a, a lot of things are a lot more modular. You build certain powers in comics with multiple powers from mm -hmm. champions now. So there's very little in there where you would just say, oh, I have a this, I'm going to buy a that. Blast and Flight are, are high on that list. So for, for your character, you know, think so pretty easier, straightforward. Yeah. But if you wanted a funky power, you might suddenly find, you say, there's no power for that. And you're like, look through, find the two or three things that in combination will do it. And you've got Negative Man from the Doom Patrol. You've got Doctor Strange. You've got um, Wolverine. You've got all of this, the weird stuff, you know, in there. Um, should you need it. But you kind of have to work. It takes some system thought. You know, to get there. What stuff is worded differently? I kind of like because uh, it's it, it's an indication that it isn't working exactly like mm -hmm. uh, you, you, uh, the older versions of Champions. Because some of the stuff, like like you've gone we've gone over today, is actually quite different than yeah. you'd expect. And the different terminology helps uh, accentuate that. Like, like this isn't what you think it is. Yeah, it works I, I chose a couple of things to be specifically yeah. worded yeah. differently for that reason. Um, the, uh, the biggest huge structural shift that I'm pretty sure is another one of those sacred cows is what I did to multi-power because I killed multi-power. 
<laughs> and instead took a different thing of multi-form and said, no, this is a much pro- this is a much more profound phenomenon. You know, you really are changing it into a different thing when you shift slots. It's this is a and, and so if you don't want that, if you just want to be able to do a ton of things, you've got it over there in, multi, in elemental control. Fair. Suck or it up, pump. and you're good. Yeah, yeah. you're and you 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 got to pay. You got you got a lot. You got to have a whole different situation with that. So yeah. only if you really are, I want I want different widgets, mm-hmm. and I want them to do different things. Then okay, if you want that to be a multi-form. You can do it. If you want to be like widget dude, then you got to go over to the variable power pool. I mean, the original variable power pool actually began in second edition as the gadget pool. Yes, I remember that. In third edition, it became the full variable power pool. Yeah. Um, The, yeah, even through the supplements, as a matter of fact, those were never even actually in the core books until, until later. So yeah, the, uh, you may notice that I broke out some limitations. Now we have constrained and conditional, which are two different things. Um, I, I still wanted to keep that customizable aspect to limitations. Yeah. I still wanted to keep that, but I didn't want it to be the black hole of nothingness that it became. And so, therefore, you can't say things like, you know, works in magnetic fields only. And just sort of presume that magnetic fields are common enough to matter, but <laughs> rare enough to be, you know, whatever, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it becomes weirdly, it, it, it doesn't translate into play well because you have the situation where, look, it sucks if you don't have, if you have the magnetic field around. So we don't, cause we don't want your character to suck, <laughs> but that means that we never see it. So basically you got more points than other people for nothing. Right. So I just wanted to get out of that whole logic entirely. And also, if you're going to take something like that, doesn't work on yellow things, well, it's going to matter, right? It's going to matter. You're going to write, before writers got tired of it, they milked that yellowness for Green Lantern for decades, you know, and because it hurt. It was like, oh, no. Dude, you know, dude wearing yellow suit. I'm, what am I going to do? Um, and granted, I can see why they eventually changed it because I think the generations changed and, oh, yeah, you know, stuff like that. But ultimately, um, in this game, if you're going to take something like what your power doesn't work on. It has to be something that is going to be in play, period. It's just, that's that's a requirement. And otherwise, don't take it. If you don't want yeah. to be limited like that, don't take it. Yeah, people, a lot of people just felt it was necessary for the points. Right. And so they put stuff on like that. Yeah, and so I want to get away from that. I want to get away from the idea that you have to break the system or play lawyer with the phrasing in order to be effective. I want to get away from that. You can looking at Nebula with that one tiny limitation. She's a damn playable alien power blasting princess. You know, she's perfectly playable. 